Well, celebrated Kiwi writer Bruce Ansley has now published 10 books and five of them have been on the bestseller list. He has a deep love of adventure, New Zealand and its people. And he joins us now to talk about his latest work, Wild Journeys, which details stories that span the length of the country. It is really great to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us, Bruce. Yeah, yeah welcome, you. Bruce. Welcome. Now, this book, this is your 10th book, obviously. So tell mm. us a little bit about some of your other books. Well, uh, I started with a book um, about growing up in New Brighton and in South Island, which was quite a wild life then. And, uh, but so many of the kind of childhood that so many uh, people of my era had, that was what I think appealed uh, to people about that. Mm -hmm. Then I, I bought a, a canal boat in France and uh, we did a two-year romantic trip, but oh. it came down to a one-year romantic trip or the end of my marriage, one or the other. You know? <laughs> so the trip ended. That um, would have been a blast, though. The canals in France. Obviously oh, very romantic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you get into writing the books before you were a journalist or did that come after? Um, it came after really. Okay. Yeah, but nice. I, I worked for the Lister for more than 20, 20 years and uh, then quit and started writing books that was about 10 years ago. And are they all themed around great journeys and people's experiences? No, not at all. Um, uh, but um, uh, I'm a tramper and uh, and uh, although that's not a book full of daring do, really, it's uh, it's all sorts of things. It's a it's a journey through New Zealand. It's a journey through my life in some respects. You're obviously a bit uh, of an adventurer, though, aren't you? I mean, obviously. Oh, a wimpy one, though. <laughs> a wimpy, like, like, that's exactly how I describe it's myself. Sounds perfect. Yeah. A wimpy adventurer, you know, just the, the nice, easy adventures. Yeah. Um, but the tagline for your new book, Wild Journeys, is New Zealand's famous and infamous historic and off the beaten path journeys, mm. tracks, routes, and passages. Mm. So you retrace the steps in it of some. Off very... the beaten path, as I said, as a as another term for getting lost. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you follow some very interesting Kiwis, um, and not just famous, but definitely the infamous as mm. well. Mm. Uh, George Wilder is George Wilder. one that you feature. That's chapter mm. one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. And I remember him uh, from a play that Tim Baum did about him. Mm. Tell us about him and his journey. George now hangs out. I think he still hangs out because he, he likes to remain pretty much invisible mm -hmm. uh, down in uh, near Herbertville in mm -hmm. southern Hawke's Bay or uh, northern Wire Rapper, whichever you choose. Um, and he's kept a very low profile. Most people know, you know, most journalists are uh, beating a track up down and beating the track back home again. Uh, um, so he's a mysterious man, but uh, it's amazing how many people still remember him. And, um, and uh, you know, he was a hero. Um, uh, this was a hell of a long time so ago, what in the early in the 60s. He, es he escaped? He escaped from jail three times, but once he escaped from jail, for, it wasn't quite a record, he escaped from jail for more than six months, or almost six months, I think it was. Wow. And um, they caught him near Taupo. And the policeman who caught him, incidentally, only died last year, so, um, you know, they, the story is turning off. But he, um, he was immensely popular among New Zealanders of the time because he was, he could, apparently disappear and reappear at will and, wow. and cops uh, uh, were chasing him obviously but he he was supposed to have done all sorts of things to, <laughs> to uh to get a, like putting his boots on backwards and laying false tracks so, so, wow. uh, oh, he's clever. Uh, well yeah. yeah they said right try that i think that's a bit of folklore actually <laughs> yeah. that's a good one though <laughs> well yeah. and sort of some of the other journeys that that you covered what drew you to those particular journeys um well, I used to be a commercial fisherman and uh, down in, uh, around in Fiordland, and uh, so I, I still like um, you know that kind of uh, odd. And uh, we voyaged right around the South Cape quite recently, and then again, my brother and I sailed around the North Cape. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of uh, it's that kind of uh, trip that really appeals to me. You know, places that, especially the South Cape, mm -hmm. uh, no, nobody ever goes down there. Right. It's just a lump of rock, incidentally. It's not not a place you'd want to it's spend very much to get time. It's a hard place to get to as well. It's a hard place, all right. It's, uh, <laughs> Do you have a favourite? Uh, of that, look, I I think my favourite uh, story in that book is a story of. Um, uh, as a Boy Scout, you had to do a certain journey if you wanted to be uh, promoted. And uh, so I did it, and it was, a, it, uh, it was called a first-class journey. But I remember that journey as being so hard. You know, and we seemed to be wandering around for days on end, a week perhaps. But I went down there again, and it, uh, 
uh, somebody sent me my, my first class log and it said it was only two days. <laughs> and uh, I went, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't do a journey like that in two days. So I went down south again and did the trip and I did it about five hours flat. But uh, it was a, that, that, that whole experience, you know, as, as children, we were more or less allowed to do as we please. And I think it sets you up. That's one of the great things about living in New Zealand. Yeah. yeah, New Zealand shapes you. It certainly does. Mm. Hey, oh, thank you for joining me. us. Brilliant. Uh, Bruce Ansley's latest book, Wild Journeys, is available now either online or at all great bookshops as well. <laughs>